Live from Candlestick Park is the moment we've all been waiting for. Fox NFL Sunday proud to present the NFC Championship game. It's the 49ers and the Giants. The winner goes to Super Bowl 46. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Pam Oliver, and Chris Myers. It's all yours. All right, Kurt, thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside our broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck. That is Troy Aikman. We cannot wait. And neither can they back there. It is loud inside the stick for this NFC Championship game. Let's talk 49ers. First time in the playoffs over the past nine years. They won a shootout last week over the Saints. And now here they are taking on the Red Hot Giants. How do they win this game here tonight? Well, I think the blueprint for the 49ers has been pretty consistent all season long. Offensively, they run the ball well. Defensively, they play the run. And then more importantly, they don't beat themselves. They don't turn the ball over, and they create takeaways. I think, though, if, to your point, Joe, if you go back to last week's game, the way in which they were able to win that game, for Alex Smith, that was huge. And if they get into that type of game here this afternoon, he has the confidence knowing that he can deliver. Well, you know by now, just looking at the pictures, it is cold, it is wet, and it is windy. The Giants have been so hot. They've won four straight. They've done it throwing the ball with Eli Manning. Is that how they have to do it with these conditions here tonight? Yeah, I think if you look at the Giants and the way that they played all year long, it has been because of Eli Manning. And of course, in recent weeks, they have played great defense, playing with a lot of confidence on that side of the ball, and they've run the ball pretty well. But in this game against this defense, hard to imagine the Giants being able to run the ball all that effectively. Once again, this will come down to Eli Manning. And over that four-game streak, Eli Manning, nine touchdowns, only one interception. Man, this is going to be a national anthem coming up from San Francisco next. And into Candlestick Park for this NFC Championship game. Let's get down to the field for the national anthem. And now, to honor America with us to perform our national anthem, please welcome Tony and Emmy Award-winning actress and Sony recording artist, Kristen Chenoweth. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets ran blare the bombs bursting Nice job, Christian Chenoweth, and off we go. Final break before we kick this thing off. It's the 49ers, it's the Giants. A trip to the Super Bowl on the line. Right now, the NFL Mobile Moment, presented by Verizon. Both teams trying to deal with the wet weather conditions today. The Giants using the Shamwell type of product in their hand warmers, hoping to absorb the moisture for Eli Manning as receivers. For the other side, Alex Smith says it's usually slick here, especially outside the numbers in these conditions. We think we have the advantage. We know where it's slick. NFL Mobile's built to bring you the game. Get updates and highlights of your favorite teams. Call Star Star to get NFL Mobile only from Verizon. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Bam! 
been chopping trees. I've done something new for this fight. I have rousted with an alligator. I done handcuffed lightning through thunder in jail. That's bad. Hospitalize a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Bad. Bad. All of you chumps are gonna bow when I whoop him. I'm gonna show you how great I am. up by now down below at Candlestick Park. It's the NFC Championship game. The New York Giants and the San Francisco 49ers. Let's go down to the field. Last minute report. First up, Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, the Giants experienced a very moving team meeting last night. Tom Coughlin, very emotional. He had to choke back tears. He was moved by just some of the contributions of his players that they've made over this time. He also said that this is a game that you guys will never forget. It'll be one that you'll want to tell your grandkids about someday. Now for more on the 49ers, let's go over to Chris Meyer. Well, Pam, the 49ers home field is a field of change because of the weather. After pregame warm-ups, I spoke with both of Jim Harbaugh's coordinators, and they said they will call the game differently today because of the wind and the rain. They'll monitor which players handle the conditions best. They also said in the second half, the playing surface they think will be very different. It'll be sloppy, difficult, and unpredictable. Frank Gore said moments ago his footing and the field were fine, but ask me again once the game starts. Let's go back upstairs to Joey. Troy. All right, Chris, thank you. There's the temperature, 53 degrees, and the heavier rain is supposed to come as we get into the second half here tonight. This is a new playing surface they put down in December. Been very pleased with the way it took, but it will be tested here this evening. 49ers will start this game with the ball. Glad you're with us. Off we go. And a short kick is taken by Kendall Hunter, the rookie, out across the 20 and knocked down at the 23. Tyler Sash on the stop. And there's that moment between head coach Jim Harbaugh and his quarterback, Alex Smith, who has blossomed for Aikman here in 2011. Yes, he has. And Jim Harbaugh, a big reason for that. I thought it was interesting visiting with him the other day. Joe when he talked about how much more relaxed he was this week in practice of course a lot of pressure on that young man last week going into that game against the Saints there's been a lot of pressure on him since he was the number one overall pick in 05 handoff is to Gore and he spins forward out across the 25 to the 27 a gain of four Jason Pierre Paul on the stop for the Giants and as we look at this 49er team they don't turn it over and they have a very athletic left tackle in Joe Staley. It's old school football really. I mean when you look at the 49ers and why they're playing in the NFC championship game the most important element of that is they do not beat themselves. Gore in the backfield on second down. They fake it to him. Now throw it to him. And there is nowhere to go. Gets a block from Staley. And he turns it into a 49er first down. Brought down right at the marker. And it looked like he had enough for a fresh set of downs. And as we talk about Staley, how about the block he laid on Jason Pierre Paul? That was the block that allowed Frank Gore then to traverse field. And take it to the middle and turn what was going to be a loss of yardage into a positive play. It was Staley who was out in front of Alex Smith on that touchdown carry. The first of those two late touchdowns last Saturday against the Saints. On first down Kendall Hunter gets it nowhere. A loss on the play of one in the First guy in there was Aaron Ross. See what's happened, Troy, with this defense 
for the New York Giants and when you talk to these offensive players either this week or last they say they're doing less defensively and it's paid off statistically. Yeah they caught it at the right time as far as the way they've been able to play here over the last month of this season. Here's left guard Mike Upati who went down on that last play. Got rolled up actually hit by Kendall Hunter. They give him a look. Second down and 11 for San Francisco when we come back. Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. They look at Mike Upati on the sideline. Shallow Rachel takes over. Filling in for the injured Upati who's rolled up. Back of his leg by Kendall Hunter. Here's Gore. Brought down by Bowley after a gain of seven. Third down coming up. You know, one of the things that's interesting now for Perry Fuel is on that last play, the 49ers went with a two tight end package, and the Giants decided to match that up with nickel defense, meaning five defensive backs. And because of Vernon Davis and his versatility and his ability to get down the field, Clearly the 49ers want to run the ball but some of those personnel groupings create some problems for a defense on third down Alex Smith may have been tipped was looking for Gore and with the incompletion it's fourth down so they got that initial first down on that drop off pass to Gore and the good block by Staley and now the Giants will handle it for the first time with Will Blackman waiting for the punt and the all pro Andy Lee. And a line drive booming punt from just inside the 10. And out across the 15 near the 16 brought down by Culliver the rookie seven yard return. Here comes Eli. Here come the Giants. No score. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Crowd is revved up as the Giants have it for the first time, and Eli Manning is playing better than he ever has. Even better than that run in the 2007 postseason. They let him throw it, and it slipped out of his hand well behind Hakeem Nix. And it's second down and 10. I think when you look at these numbers and you start looking at the personnel groupings around Eli Manning Troy they have maybe the best young big play receiver set in the NFL right now yeah, and they've all stepped up at various times this season of course the year ended with Victor Cruz being the guy and then the last two playoff games Hakeem Nix has been outstanding Dave Deal lost his shoes so Tony Hugo is in the lineup out at left tackle second and ten. Again, Manning to put it up. And deep down the middle for Beckham. A lot of contact, no flag. Third and ten coming up. Well, good protection for Eli Manning. Nice clean pocket. And Travis Beckham is the guy who they're trying to get down the field. Carlos Rogers, the Pro Bowl corner this year is in coverage and that's one of the things that Eli Manning talked about was trying to get the ball to Travis Beckham a little bit more in this ball game only five receptions for him on the season but in postseason he's contributed much more three catches in those two games Manning with all day in the pass to Cruz is good for a first down. 12 yards to Victor Cruz who has emerged and may be one of if not the biggest surprises in the NFL this season and this is what he has done all season long for them you see the man coverage Carlos Rogers is the one one on one but he's able to come across Carlos Rogers and create some separation the one position that was a big concern coming into the year that slot receiver Victor Cruz has filled it nicely been a big weapon for Manning on third down this season as the handoff is to Bradshaw and Bradshaw got nothing I think if you look at the Giants the last time they played against the 49ers back in November they did not run the ball all that effectively 
but they did run it 29 times in that game. That's a lot. And they're going to have to continue to do that throughout this ball game, even if they're not getting yardage like they didn't get on that first down run. They cannot get into a situation where they're relying just solely on Eli Manning. Nobody better in the NFL defending the run than the 49ers. Kevin Gilbride, offensive coordinator for the Giants, rarely abandons the run. Bradshaw doing the most he can with it, takes it to the 30. A gain of two. And Troy, when you look at this defense, they have all pro inside linebackers with Patrick Willis, who we all know about. And this year, offensive players found out about Navarro Bowman. Navarro Bowman, yeah, and he he steps in after Tequio Spikes was not signed after the lockout, and he's had a great year, probably the best tandem of inside linebackers in the NFL. Third down and eight. No pressure and the pass is caught by Nix. Back to back third down conversions for the Giants. Culliver in coverage and Nix is good for 10. Well they're going to double down inside on the inside receiver. They drop the safety down and so because of that you've got one on one then on the outside. It's a good job of Eli recognizing exactly what the 49ers are trying to do within their coverage. And knowing he has then one on one Hakeem Nix against the rookie Colliver. How good has Manning been on third down this postseason? 18 of 24. And now on first down, Manning left side incomplete. And he and Victor Cruz not on the same page. And Victor gets that look from Eli Manning. And when we talk to Victor and Eli, those two have a lot of leeway within the route. And there's a lot of body language reading that Eli Manning puts into effect when he's throwing to Victor Cruz. Yeah, they they do have a lot of freedom. They've got to trust that each other's really seen the same thing within the coverage and where the leverage is. They've got to be especially sharp in a in a in a weathered game like this with rain. Now on second and ten, here's Bradshaw, right side. Bowman made the play. A gain of two. This 49ers defense and the way that they pursue the football, you know, from sideline to sideline, they're as fast as any defense in football, and it's hard to run outside against them. We talked about the inside linebackers, Bowman and Willis, but even the guys up front. In fact, the real, the real key for the Giants up front is going to be containing their blocks for an extended period of time because these 49ers are as good as anybody at running down plays from the backside. Blitz coming. Manning has it knocked out of his hand. Still loose. Recovered by the Giants. Knocked out by Ray McDonald. And it was in the end McKenzie who got on top of it to avoid a turnover. It's fourth down. Ray McDonald, he's over right guard Chris Snee, and he just beats him. He comes past Snee, and then as Eli's trying to get the ball out of his hands, McDonald is there and strips it loose. A Giants offense that's only had two giveaways over the last four games. That was close. And now Weatherford. Kyle Williams from inside the 15. A little room to run. And he is dragged down from behind. Play made by Greg Jones. 49ers have it second time. Man, it's wet and cold. There's no score in San Francisco. Sponsored by Pizza Hut. Right now, get any pizza for just 10 bucks, only at your Pizza Hut. By Verizon 4G LTE, America's fastest, most reliable 4G network. And by Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. We want to welcome American Forces Network as we rejoin you from San Francisco. Second time the 49ers have the ball. And they start this drive at their own 27. Quick set up and throw and it's batted back into the face of Alex Smith. Second and 10. 
You, know, you mentioned Alex Smith in the year that that he had Joe and I think even going back to last week I think that was the best game of his career certainly he's had you know games where he's had better numbers. But when you consider what he was able to do late in that game you know a lot of people felt that if it came down to a shootout with the Saints that the 49ers would not be able to play that game Alex Smith played it. He did a nice job and I know it gave him a lot of confidence as he came into this game this afternoon and his coaching staff showed a lot of confidence in him. And that last possession going for the win instead of the tie. Smith airs it out sideline head Vernon Davis. And Davis down the sideline winning the race to the end zone touchdown. Split with Vernon Davis, and you can see then how much field he has to work. It's essentially what you would call a wheel route. Antrell Roll did not expect Vernon Davis to go deep. He was expecting some kind of out route. He was sitting on the route, and with that kind of speed, there's no way Antrell Roll can sit on the route and then turn and keep pace with Vernon Davis. This is a this is a player that Ruben runs a 4240. Unbelievable speed for a big man. There was also an unsportsmanlike conduct by the offense number 85. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. If the touchdown stands, it will be enforced from the previous spot or from the dead ball spot if replay changes the ruling. So there you go. It looked like Vernon Davis came close right there with those two steps in stepping out of bounds. So is there enough to overturn the call on the field? They look at every scoring play. They're giving that a look and then once Vernus Vernon Davis climbed on top of that camera stand right here he got the flag. We'll get the call when we come back. Vernon Davis came close to stepping out outside the 30. We'll get our call from Ed Hockley. To reverse and replay, there must be clear, uncontroverted, uncontroverted evidence that the ruling on the field was wrong. In other words, you have to be certain. Here, the ruling on the field stands. It is a touchdown. That unsportsmanlike conduct penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. During that play, Don Carlson, the side judge, was there step for step for a while with Vernon Davis. It's a 73 yard touchdown from Alex Smith to a guy who's got to be the fastest tight end in the National Football League with his great speed. He was not going to be caught. Well of those on the field today for the 49ers Vernon Davis is the fastest guy on their squad. I mean that's the kind of speed that he has. Seven catches 180 yards and two touchdowns against the Saints last week and number 85 the 49ers strike first today. Up 7 zip on the Giants. Vernon Davis good from 73 yards out. Then the penalty. You cannot use anything as a prop in a touchdown celebration. Chris Myers eavesdropping down on the sideline, saying that Jim Harbaugh, head coach of the 49ers, is arguing it's no different than what the Packers do with the Lambeau leap. However, Mike Carrera in our booth reminding us the Lambeau leap is grandfathered in. Use a camera stand as a prop, and that means that Akers has to kick from the 20. Jernigan from inside the 15. Pretty well covered. Out across the 30, knocked down near the 32 by Colin Jones. This Wednesday, Keeper Sutherland returns to Fox in a new series from the creators of Heroes. What if you could read all the patterns in the universe and see how we are all connected? His 10 year old son can touch. See the preview event Wednesday after American Idol right here on Fox. So this is a game about field position Joe and that penalty could have been significant but once again the 49ers coverage unit showing why they're one of the best in the league coached by Brad Celia who had all that success in New England. 
He's got a good group. They mark Jernigan down at the 31. Quick throw, Beckham. His first catch, good for four. Patrick Willis on the tackle. Travis Beckham, a guy who was a third round pick out of Wisconsin in 09, and he had not made really any dent for the Giants. Had that big 67 yard touchdown at home against Green Bay earlier this season. Eli's thrown his way twice. John gets it. 49ers so good up front, so good with their front seven. That run good for three. As we mentioned a couple of times, they led the league, the 49ers did, in defending the run. They allowed only three rush touchdowns all season. And only an average of 77 yards per game. It's third and three. is made for a Giants first down. They're rolling it a good catch and Nix is injured. Making his way off the field. Let's take another look. Well they give the rookie Culver some help over the top with Dante Whitner so that he can't get deep on him but then the inside breaking routes as we saw on the slant route opens up and the team Nix the way that he came down looks to be a shoulder. Catch is good. Good for seven. Third down completion. Looking left now over the middle is Jenkins. Brought down by Willis. Gain of five, and we go back to Hakeem Nix, who already has four receiving touchdowns this postseason, a single postseason record for the Giants. Well, he's been outstanding, and that's a huge blow if he's unable to come back into this ball game. Fortunately for them, they've still got Victor Cruz and they've got Mario Manningham whose best game of the season actually came against these 49ers back in November taking Knicks off the field. Hand off to Bradshaw gets to the edge and has a Giants first down. Knocked down by Dante Widner the hard hitting safety and a carry of seven yards. You see Patrick Willis and this is rare that you're able to see a running back really get outside Patrick Willis number 52 he initially comes up inside but because of his speed probably the fastest linebacker in the NFL he's usually able to make those plays but Ahmad Bradshaw is able to get on the corner. What's coming from the 49ers handoff is to Bradshaw and Ahmad Bradshaw picks up one so Boaga. He's one of the real good athletes, really, in the NFL. A big guy, Isaac Sopoaga. He is 6'2, 330, and you and I were watching him wing the ball around during the pregame warm ups. He can throw a football 70 <laughs> yards. Well, and he can catch it, too. I mean, he's already got a reception this season. He's an amazing athlete, and it's one of the reasons why he's so effective there on the nose, is because of his athleticism. He's a very difficult guy, that along with his strength. Very difficult to block. I'm 18. Second down and nine. Hynoski out of the backfield, the fullback. And he's going to be knocked down half a yard shy of a first down by Terrell Brown. How about that rookie Alden Smith for the 49ers? Well, obviously, he had a great year this season coming in and making the adjustment from a defensive end in college to a stand up pass rusher for the 49ers and some of their nickel packages and he's going to draw a lot of attention in pass protection. Manning rolling to his right that was tipped. And we'll see what the Giants want to do likely go for it on fourth down. It was in the direction of Manningham. It's fourth and one. Yeah, I think not a bad not a bad call there by offensive coordinator Kevin Gilbride knowing that 
All right, if we don't pick it up on third down, that I'm sure Tom Coughlin had already let him know that we're going to go for it based on where we're at on the field on fourth. A bypass of 52 yard field goal try. And go for it. Here's Jacobs, and Jacobs brought down right at the marker. The line judge comes in shy of the line to gain. Navarro Bowman made the tackle. And the Giants, who are one for one going for it on fourth down this postseason, look like they just came up short. It's going to be awfully close as they bring out the chains to measure it. You say they, they got it on fourth down before, but for the season they really have not been very good running the ball for a yard and they fail to make it this 49ers defense is so good at attacking the line of scrimmage and Bowman makes the play seven nothing San Francisco and they take it over on a fourth down stop. See that play, Brandon Jacobs coming up short on fourth and one. Yeah, and one of the keys for the 49ers linebackers is that defensive front keeps guys off of them, and Bowman was able to just come up untouched and make the play. Here's a reverse. The ball comes loose. Giants take over. It appeared, and now they're going to say the 49ers back on top. Kendall Hunter was trying to get it to Kyle Williams. One of the Giants had a clear shot at the ball, and it must have slipped out. But that is a dangerous play obviously with the conditions being what they are and let's see who missed. It was human Europe and that ball came out at the bottom of that pile. And I believe it was Kyle Williams who got back on top of it. So Kyle Williams had a short split and because of the action in the backfield the ball got on him pretty quick. There was a little bit behind 49ers fortunate to get back on that one. Yeah human Europe had a clear shot at it slipped right through his arms. Here's Gore. That play lost 10. And let's take another little look. Human Yura. This ball bounces right up into his gut. And then at the bottom of that pile, it is Kyle Williams who gets back on it for the 49ers. And as we talked about coming into this game, I mean that's just something that the 49ers have, have not done is, is turn the ball over and they don't turn it over there. But a golden opportunity for the Giants to give the ball back to their offense with outstanding field position. But Human Yura unable to secure it. Let's go down to the field and check in with Pam Oliver. Well, Joe Hakeem Nix, he just came back out of the locker room. They were looking at his shoulder. He landed pretty hard on it. He is warming up now, taking balls. He is probable as his return. Back to you. All right. And with number 88, the way he has gone through this postseason. One of the two 1,000 yard receivers for the Giants. They need him here today. Yeah, and you see right now he's trying to figure out what his range of motion is going to be if he can extend his arm above his shoulder pads and, and catch the football. Third down and 14. Shallow Rachel back on the offensive line for you, Potty, who came out. This one's underthrown and nearly picked by Ross. And again dealing with a wet ball dealing with a lot of wind and with 40 seconds left. It's fourth down. Let's go down to Chris Myers. Okay. All right Joe Mike Upati who injured his right ankle earlier was retaped. They gave him something for pain. He tried to give it a go. He's headed to the locker room questionable the rest of the way. Vernon Davis after the touchdown was pointing to his lower back came to the sideline. The 49ers have the team chiropractor. They checked him out. He's OK for the rest of the game. Blackman will stay away and that ball checks up. Tap at the 30 by Anthony Dixon. So that's where the Giants will take over down by seven. Super Bowl week kicks off with the Pro Bowl. Watch the NFL's best. The 2012 Pro Bowl coming Sunday January 29th on NBC and a week later on February 5th Super Bowl 46 it'll be the Patriots who were last there at the end of the 07 season taking on the winner 
of this one here in San Francisco. Knicks back on the field at the top of your screen. Manning. Incomplete, and he went right back to Hakeem Nix. 26 seconds left in the opening quarter in the rain. Really picking up. Yeah, and the, the rain was in the weather forecast all week long, and they've kind of dodged it around here the last couple of days, and then the skies opened up here this afternoon when we got here to the stadium and in talking with Eli Manning yesterday he was saying that you know the the weather really is not a factor as far as throwing the ball in wet conditions but it looks like some have gotten away from him. Here's Jacobs. Jacobs who came up short on fourth and one last time he carried it by the way in his career now eight of 16 on fourth and one and the Giants one for five during the regular and postseason on fourth and one. That's the end of a quarter of play here in San Francisco. Seven nothing. 49ers on top. Giants with the ball. Back on Fox after this. Conditions continuing to deteriorate as we go through this NFC championship game. Third down and six. For the Giants as they try to keep the footballs dry. New York down by seven. Manning. Deep. Cruz. What a catch. Backpedaling all the way. And another third down conversion for the Giants and Eli Manning. 36 yards to Victor Cruz. Victor Cruz, he's in the inside position as a receiver, and so he releases. A little bit like what Vernon Davis did for the 49ers and he gets then Carlos Rogers in a trail position and it was a matter of whether or not Eli could get enough on it in these conditions because Victor Cruz had two or three steps then on Carlos Rogers first down at the 49ers 29 yard line Bradshaw did well to gain ground and pick up five and you talked about Eli Manning and the things that he's been able to do on third down this is a 49ers defense that overall has been good on third down throughout the year but the Giants in this game have been excellent Eli's four for five on third down in this game overall his numbers second down and five Good protection. Now time runs out and he drops it backward to Bradshaw. Amon Bradshaw, what a good play out on the edge made by Bowman. A gain of only one. Pretty good protection there initially for Eli, and he's trying to go outside and thought that he may have a chance, but at the last minute he gets the pressure, and, and that's just good pocket presence by Eli Manning knowing exactly where he can go with the football to avoid the sack. You see it over and over, even going back to last week's win against the Packers. Eli does not take a lot of sacks, and one of the reasons is is because he's so good at knowing where his outlet receivers are. That goes down as a run because it was a lateral. Now David Boss, the former 49er, is being looked at on the sideline, so Kevin Boots slides in at center. Boss, who missed five games during the regular season with knee and neck issues. Booth was at center then. Mitch Petras comes in at left guard. And with the wet conditions, we'll keep an eye on that center quarterback exchange on third and four. It'll be out of the shotgun. Over the middle, pass caught. And a first down, Victor Cruz. Six yards and another Eli Manning third down conversion. And the first thing you got to do is make sure you get the snap. And Kevin Booth delivers a good one. He's had some problems from time to time when he's played center. But Victor Cruz, he's able to get there in the middle in the zone and make the catch before Bowman is able to then make a play. But that's a good job by those two guys, Eli Manning as well as Cruz. Being on the same page. There are the numbers on third down. He was the third rated quarterback in the NFL this season. On third down, Eli Manning. 
Red hot in the postseason. Wide open Knicks. And Nick sets up first and goal inside the 10 at the 8. Ball moves inside the 10, and they're going to say that Nick's was brought down half a yard shy of a first down. Well, big, second and short coming up. Big Fangio talked about it as far as who are we going to give help to? We're going to give it to Nix, and if we do, then that opens up Cruz. If we give it to Cruz, it opens up Manningham, and that's the dilemma that the 49ers face. What's it going to be on second and one? Hand off to Jacobs. And Jacobs picks up the first down. A gain of two. So now it is first and goal for the Giants, down by seven. Opening minutes of the second quarter. Well, look at the Giants now that they're inside the red zone. As we see that they've been able to control the time of possession. They did the last time they, these two teams met as well. Of course, they came up on the short end of the score. But this is a big deal right now for the New York Giants because they, in the last game, got into the red zone four times, only scored one touchdown. That ended up being the difference in that game. It's important. In fact, this is where Eli Manning talked about working Beckham a little bit. But he's not on the field. Manning has to use a timeout. Play clock was winding down. It'll be first and goal when we come back. The Giants down by seven. Football no limits, only from Sprint. And by Cadillac, the new standard of the world. First down and goal. Ball at the six. They fake the delayed handoff. End zone and incomplete. Dangerous throw. Coverage by Rodgers. Nicks the intended target. Pretty tight fit there, and that's one of the wrinkles that the Giants tried coming into this game. Rather than have Nicks be the outside receiver and go to the single receiver side, they put him in motion and then have him work the middle of the field. Obviously, a big target is able to use his body. Good idea, but that was good coverage. Tenth play of this drive. the number four red zone defense in the NFL during the regular season. Manning pulls it back and now hits his tight end Pasco for the touchdown. And Bear Pasco who did not have a touchdown during the regular season is into the end zone in this NFC championship game the extra point would tie it. Bear Pasco lines up at tight end. They go slot the other four, the other side of the formation, and it looked like initially that Eli was looking for the crossing route from the receiver coming underneath Pasco, but Pasco breaks open, and Eli sees it beautifully and gets the ball in his hands. Nothing's a given with a weather like this, and that one just sneaks in to tie it. Eli Manning gets his team down the field. A big part of it, the completion to Victor Cruz. And then Bear Pasco takes it in. We're tied at seven. Football's as dry as possible on this rain-soaked night in San Francisco. The Giants have just tied it. First ever touchdown in the NFL from Bear Pasco. Six-yard touchdown catch, and we're 7-7. Williams out across the 20 to the 23 and we are backed up in our on camera spot Mike Pereira is with us to uh, help us out with any crazy rulings we may get in this game talk about the umpire and his job and what his responsibilities are keeping the football dry you know Joe each team has 24 footballs that they can use for their own snaps and the umpire is the key guy to try to keep him down but the interesting thing now with him in the offensive side of the, of the play now he doesn't get as much time over the ball with the towel over it so the balls are going to be wetter and they can't use anything but a towel to try to keep him dry on the sidelines. Again this year they've moved the umpire from right behind the defensive line almost a linebacker position to the offensive backfield behind the deepest player on offense. How about Kyle Williams overthrown and Alex Smith 
Put too much air under that pass downfield. He had Kyle Williams open at second and ten. There's the play action in the backfield. There was a little confusion with him and Frank Gore at the end of that play. You see Rocky Bernard comes in and, and puts Alex Smith on the ground. But here was the play action in the backfield, and, and Gore just abandoned the play action fake to try to help out to that right side in pass protection. Now second down and ten. Blitz coming. Kendall Hunter. Instead, it's Alex Smith. Out to the 30. Third down and short coming up as Alex Smith gained eight. Well, we saw from last week the kind of wheels that he has and speed and. You know that's one of his real strengths as a quarterback is his ability to run and and you've got to be able to keep that in mind when you're playing against Alex Smith at quarterback because if it's not there now that was designed but if it's not there down the field this guy could get down the field in a hurry rain stops over 10 to play in the opening half pass caught flag is down. Kyle Williams made the catch. Four yard completion, but this one, a flag on the plane, will get the call from Ed Hockey League. First down. Illegal hands to the face. Defense number 31. That's a five yard penalty enforced in the previous spot, results in an automatic first down. Aaron Ross trying to get physical with Kyle Williams on the outside and, and they make the correct call with the hands to the face but they've got where Kyle Williams did he got Aaron Ross turned all around on that play. This is a secondary for the Giants and lost their best cover corner during the preseason Terrell Thomas but he's not the only one to go down Bruce Johnson Michael Coe Ryan Witherspoon Justin Tryon. They have had a ton of injuries in that secondary for the Giants. Yeah they have and then on the other side for the 49ers probably the healthiest team in all of football this season and when you look at them and the, and the and the guys that they lost the starters that they lost to injury was not many. They lost Josh Morgan a receiver they like Braylon Edwards a tough time staying healthy they cut him. They are without a big weapon in Ted Ginn Jr. Out of that bad knee. Injured last week on Saturday against the Saints. Here's Gore good for four. Meanwhile Alex Smith the number one overall pick out of Utah in 2005 has been through a lot. Not just the pressure of being the first pick but he's been through three head coaches seven offensive coordinators. And 17 starting wide receivers. But it seems like this head coach that he's got right now is going to be around a while. Yeah, I would say. Second down and six. Here's Gore. Nice run. First down. Picked up eight. And now Anthony Davis comes out of the pile without a helmet on and they're going to throw a flag. Michael Boley was involved. As those two got into it. Here's the end of that play Anthony Davis he's got Michael Boley down and then Boley doesn't like it and he grabs the face mask of of Anthony Davis we'll see here now how they're going to sort through this and assess the penalty. So their discussion continues. With an open mic. Well, there was some great movement along that offensive line on on that play and this is a big group up front. It's a big physical group three of the starters along that offensive line first round picks. And that's what they like to do is just come off the ball and pound on people and Anthony Davis he's a big man. After the play was over personal foul unnecessary roughness 
by the offense, number 85. That was not a retaliation. It was a separate act. A 15-yard penalty. The down counts. And now Jim Harbaugh gets the explanation. We saw Bowley and Anthony Davis. Here is Vernon Davis who climbs over the back of Deion Grant, and that's what drew the flag. Yeah, he had no business getting in the middle of that. And that's his second 15 yard penalty of this game. To go along with his 73 yard touchdown catch and run. So all it does in essence is move the ball back. They got the line to gain, so the first down remains, and it's first and ten. Put the ball back at the 32. Here's Cole. And a nice run on first down. We talked a lot about Vernon Davis. He's had a great postseason, that record-setting day. Last week, we go way back to 2008, and after an unsportsmanlike penalty against Seattle, Mike Singletary, his head coach, sent him off the field. And it's a long walk here at Candlestick Park. And then the two touchdowns last week, including the game winner and that emotional embrace with Jim Harbaugh when he got back to the sideline. It's been a long road for Vernon Davis as Gore bounces it to the edge. And as a first down out across the 45, a carry of nine yards for the guy who's number one all time in 49ers history carrying the football. I was talking about Anthony Davis and you know how big this offensive line is and how physical they can get. He does an excellent job of blocking the point on Jason Pierre Paul. And then on the outside, he gets some help by the wide receiver who's also blocking. And that's why this team over the course of this season has has been good running the football. First down at the 48. Smith guns it, and that pass broken up in the direction of Davis, and a nice play made by Chase Blackburn. That well, was an excellent play by Chase Blackburn because he is then able to recognize that it's a pass, and he gets back underneath. Vernon Davis and is able to make a play on the ball. Remember, Chase Blackburn was not a part of this defense the last time these two teams met. Signed just before the Green Bay game. And he has really made a difference in the middle for the Giants defensively. Second and ten. Blitz coming off the edge. Alex Smith keeps it. And it's Kenny Phillips making the tackle as Smith gets five. And we're seeing Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator for San Francisco, pull out some of the things that, that Alex Smith does so well. Remember back to last week, the, the play there in a critical situation in that game, anticipated man blocked it up. Alex Smith just trying to pick up the first down. And he winds up going in for the touchdown. But Greg Roman is very creative in the various things that they do within this offense. He was with Jim Harbaugh at Stanford, third down and five. Just three men on the rush, and Smith is dragged down short of the first down by Jason Pierre-Paul. Nice play by number 90, who has emerged into an all-pro defensive end this season for the Giants. Well, that's an excellent job on his part because here he is trying to rush the passer and then he's able to come off of the block and get Alex Smith to the ground. Otherwise, Alex Smith had, he had a lot of grass in front of him to pick up a lot more yardage and now it's fourth down. And it's fourth and two. This Giants defense is held four times on fourth down this postseason. One and told for four. And now a penalty flag flies. Play clock is at zero. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty. It's fourth down. So they're trying to draw the Giants offside. They didn't bite. And here comes a punt from Andy Lee. Yeah, I think that's the point, Joe, that, that I don't think they were ever going to snap the ball because of where they were on the field. And Jim Harbaugh knows as well as anybody that with his defense and in this type of game, like Tom Coughlin said to us coming in, 
field position is obviously very vital in this game. And so see if you can get them off sides. They're unable to. Clock runs out. They're even able to preserve their timeouts. They have three. Giants have two. And New York about to get it back. Will Blackman waiting for it. End over end punt. And Blackman called for a fair catch it looked like. And then he took off. And they throw a flag. It's kind of a half-hearted fair catch signal. And then Blackman, after catching the punt, took off. And they throw a flag. It's amazing how open you get when you call for a fair catch. <laughs> you just want to you want to then catch it and run. Here's the call. There was an invalid fair catch signal given by number 36 of the receiving team. That's a five yard penalty. It's enforced from where he caught the ball. New York keeps the ball first down in a tie game under five and a half to go in the first half. Experience Super Bowl Sunday in a whole new way. Giants will start with the ball at their own 19. A 7 7 game. Delayed handoff, Bradshaw. Out just beyond the 25. This February, NASCAR's best will converge at the Daytona International Speedway. It's NASCAR's biggest race. Defending Sprint Cup Series champion Tony Stewart, rookie Danica Patrick. Highlight of field full of drivers looking to take home auto racing's ultimate prize. And from all of us here at Fox to our very own Daryl Waltrip, congratulations that Friday night ceremony into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. That's a great honor. Congratulations, Daryl. Second down and four. 180. Pass is caught. Defender fell down. And Victor Cruz is out to the 40. And this is what we talked about coming into the game as far as the impact that the conditions were going to have. And a defensive back, they worry about this. You see Carlos Rogers is trying to drive on the ball. And he's fortunate that Dante Whitner was pursuing from the inside and then able to get to Victor Cruz because had Whitner not have been there, Victor Cruz was off to the races. And he has done that quite a bit this season. Touchdown catch against the Jets. Here's Bradshaw out of the backfield, and Ahmad Bradshaw out across the 45. Well, mark him at the 46, a gain of six. Of course, who can forget the run that Ahmad Bradshaw had last week to set up the Hell Mary before the end of the half against the Packers, but he did not play the last time they faced the 49ers. We saw a nice run a couple of plays ago, and he gives them a little something that they don't have when he's not in the lineup. He can create some plays, especially when he's running the football. Delayed handoff, Bradshaw. Doesn't go down easily, but he had a lot of hands and arms on him. Dante Whitner on the tackle. Third and short coming up after a two-yard run by Bradshaw. the 49ers on third and two and put it up. Three and a half to go. Manning goes down. Sacked by the 49ers. And it's Bowman who made the play. Looked like Eli was trying to go outside to Travis Beckham, who was in motion. And he's not able to get the ball out of his hands. He has him initially, but there was some inside pressure. Looks like it was from Ray McDonald. But Bowman then came in and was able to get him around the ankles and get him to the ground. So now the 49ers will get it back with three timeouts remaining. Nice punt by Weatherford. He claps his hands as he heads off. They're going to mark the ball 
at the 16 where Alex Smith and the 49ers offense will set it up tied at seven. Some of the all-time greats in the history of the NFL have met in this matchup. The Giants and the 49ers meeting in this game for the eighth time during the postseason. They've played one NFC Championship game against one another in the past. It was won by the Giants on the foot of Matt Barr as Gore is brought down with a loss of one and we look at the offensive leaders for the 49ers in the day for Alex Smith. He does have that touchdown but all of it chewed up on the 73 yard catch by Vernon Davis outside of that nothing through the air. Yeah hasn't done much. This is a big second down play right now then for the 49ers if they don't get a first down expect that the clock's running for a timeout from Tom Coughlin and Trying to get the ball then back to the Giants offensively. And wisely, I think Alex is going to let this run down to the two-minute warning. That's a good decision. That's where we are, second down and 11 when we come back. 49ers with the ball backed up at their own 10. There's another way to look at the total yards in this first half. 73 on the touchdown to Vernon Davis. 19 plays, 66 yards. Other than that one big play. 7-7 Seven -seven game, ball at the 15. So 10 going to break, and it's second down and 11. It's Gore. Right into the gut of Tuck. Jason Pierre, ball on the stop as well. And now after that two-yard run, it'll be a timeout taken by the Giants. They are left with one in third down coming up. Sunday, February 5th. Fox Sports is proud to bring you exciting live coverage of the Barclays Premier League as Chelsea looks to avenge an early season loss when they take on Wayne Rooney and a Manchester United team looking to keep pace near the top of the league. Our coverage begins Sunday, February 5th at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific on Fox. You know, Joe, I got to believe that Jim Harbaugh gave instructions to Greg Roman that they're going to run the ball here based on what we've seen on this possession that, you know, he would hate to throw the ball and then stop the clock and still leave the Giants with one timeout left. But right now, I think the 49ers are going to be thrilled if they can go in at halftime with a tie ball game. Right now, the 49ers 0 for 3 on third down. It's third and nine. Blitz. Smith tripped up, and it was Tuck who got it done. It'll be fourth down, and now the Giants will spend their final timeout, and they will get the ball back in this tie game with about a minute and a half left. Yeah, but that was a really good job there by Alex Smith. He, you know, they call a pass play that they felt was safe and maybe be able to then pick up the first down, and, and he wasn't comfortable with it. And then, of course, he had some pressure, and rather than just throw it away and stop the clock, he knew that if he scrambled and kept the ball, that he could at least force the Giants to burn that last time out. I'm sure those things were talked about on the sideline with Alex Smith and Jim Harbaugh. So a minute 49 remaining. Two guys are deep. Blackman and Antrell roll. And now it's Blackman who will go deep, and it is. This is where you have a weapon in Andy Lee. Right now probably the best in the business. At 47 punts during the regular season of 50 or more yards. Right, Blackman inside the 25. Room to run. Blackman got hit, stayed up. As he crossed the 35. Coming up, it's the Visa Halftime Report. Kurt Terry, Howie Michael, and Jimmy. There is their set, which will pop up during the break. And they will have analysis of this first half and then talk about the Patriots' win earlier this afternoon at home 
over the Ravens. Well, this has been a clean first half, you know, for both teams as far as protecting the football, haven't turned it over, and it's been a game of field position as we anticipated. But both teams with their punters and being able to at least get some yards on their possessions have been able to constantly put the other offense back, although the Giants have good field position here. Yeah, their best starting field position of the day. To the sideline, dropped by Hynoski. Actually, Ballard. Tight end out there. The pass off his hands. Probably worried about getting out of bounds before securing the catch. And Ballard, who has been battling a bad knee, presents Eli Manning with the first drop by the Giants in this game. Second and ten. Is protected, goes over the middle and finds Cruz. Victor Cruz goes down at the 49 of San Francisco. 15 yards and the clock winds with a minute 15 left. Protected again is Manning, and the pass to the sideline broken up. Intended for Manningham. Go back and take a look at that last completion to Victor Cruz. He's there in the inside receiver position and just his feel for what Eli Manning is expecting. Initially, he's going to hook it up, but then he moves and is able to make a play on the ball. And Mario Manningham, he's trying to haul that one in. Nice play by the rookie Culliver to knock it out of his hands. Culliver, who was sick last week, struggled a little bit, but he's had a nice rookie year. Manning finds Cruz and Victor Cruz shows off those good hands does not get out of bounds gets a first down as the game clock continues to wind really a nice catch by by Cruz on that play not easy in these conditions to be able to go down like that catch it and then still get a little more out of it he's got six for 95 yards this time he can't make the grab. 37 seconds left, second and 10 for the Giants. Here's that last catch that Cruz had. Here's where they've been able to get some things on the on the 49ers. Some of that crossing routes, whether they're in man coverage or in zone coverage, and underneath in front of the linebackers, they've been pretty effective with it. In case you're wondering, it would be a 56-yard try from here. Giants need more yards. Second and ten. Manning. Pass is caught. What a half Victor Cruz is having. 17 yards, and now the Giants are inside field goal range. You know, Joe, it's what I talked about with Eli Manning and his presence in the pocket and his ability to move and keep the play going. You see, he feels the pressure there by Ray McDonald. He steps up, and before Justin Smith can make a play on him, not only does he keep it going, but then he delivers a ball where only his guy then can make a play. That was good coverage, really, by Carlos Rogers, but excellent reception by Cruz. Second down and 10, 20 seconds left. Victor Cruz, seven catches, 112 yards. clock expires delay of game offense to five yard penalty well, you saw Eli the Giants Manning. were out of timeouts and there is no foul for a team out of timeouts to call another timeout unless they're trying to freeze a kicker out of field goal see Eli he, he knows the clock's running down and then he forgot that he didn't have a timeout to burn <laughs> he's trying to let the referee know that he wants a timeout of course he doesn't have one and they get the delay of game to make it second and 15. Pass caught. Victor Cruz down inside the 15-yard line. They're going to mark him short of a first down. The clock will wind. 
And now Eli clocks the ball with six seconds left, and Troy, members of the field goal unit, were on the field for a moment and had to scamper off. Yeah, I think they thought that they had a timeout that they could stop the clock as well, and Eli had to first clock it to stop the clock, but you're right, Joe. The, <laughs> the field goal team was running out onto the field thinking that they were going to try to get the snap and get the field goal off without a clock situation and then fortunately for the Giants Eli recognized it waited to, until he left the field and then clocked it and now a 31 yard try for the first lead of the day for the Giants and Tynes hits Now let's go back and look how things transpired. Watch them get up to the line in Troy Circles. Members of the field goal unit who had to hurry off the field. And then when Eli Manning spiked it, it set up the field goal try and Lawrence Tynes good for 31 for a three point New York lead. Yeah, because in that situation, if you're over on the sidelines as the, the kicker and the long snapper and the holder, you're thinking, OK, are we going to try to hurry up and get out there on the field and get it kicked without stopping the clock? Or are we going to stop the clock first? Clearly, everyone's able to take a deep breath and relax if you stop the clock. But really smart by Eli seeing it and then letting them get off the field so there wasn't a penalty. How about that guy, Victor Cruz, in the year he has had really stepped up when Dominic Hickson went down in the second game of the season and he ended up with 82 catches ninth most in the league over 1500 receiving yards so good in the fourth quarter and terrific on third down outside of Eli I mean, he's one of the main reasons why this squad's where they are and this is Williams as the first half comes to a close and the Giants took advantage of having the ball, taking it down the field. And Eli Manning got New York into field goal range. 31-yarder puts New York on top. He's a halftime report coming up after this from your local Fox station. Today, we have Friday on his net. Smith airs it out, sideline, Hatburn and Davis winning the race to the end zone. Let's go, Trevor! New York Giants, baby. Manning pulls it back and now hits his tight end, Pasco, for the touchdown. It is a three-point game as we get ready for the start of the second half. You can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. The Giants will start this half with the football up by three. Eli Manning who put together that great 2007 postseason has been even better here in the 2011 postseason. Knocks it through the back of the end zone and we go down to the field and check in with Chris Myers. Joe Jim Harbaugh ran in and ran out at halftime with the same kind of focus and intensity he had as a player and he said what you saw in the first half you'll see a lot of in the second half with sticking to the basics a priority for his team. He didn't tell me what he would tell his team but they would like offensively to get Frank Gore more involved defensively they said they'll make some adjustments with the three wide receiver sets of the Giants. Chris thanks it's a first down at the 20 for New York looking for a Super Bowl 42 rematch with the Patriots already in. Hand off to Bradshaw. Nice run. And Ahmad Bradshaw, who had nothing over the left side, tries the right side and gets nine. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Tom Coughlin thrilled about that field goal to end the half, but he also said that there are certain things that we've got to improve upon. First of all, we've got to get our run game going. Defensively, he is very pleased with the way the ball game is going. He also said that we have got to remember that this is going to be a fourth quarter game, meaning that this is going to go down to the wire. Back to you, Joe. All right, thank you, Pam. Second down and one. Three 
Bradshaw. Nothing. Went backward and Harrelson made the play. May have even lost half a yard, so a third and short coming up. Well, it's just an excellent job defensively by the 49ers. And for Ahmad Bradshaw, he's been able to bounce a few of them to the outside, but with one yard to go, you know, really, you just got to try to keep your head down and get as much as you can and get that first down. Harris Harrelson does a good job of stopping Bradshaw on second and short. To his right, incomplete for Bradshaw. And for good measure, Brooks gave Bradshaw a hit. After the incompletion, it's a three and out. Well, that's an excellent job defensively by the 49ers going three and out, especially after giving up nine yards on the first play. So with two chances to pick up the first, the Giants are una unable to do that. And it's especially big considering the fact that the Giants were able to get the three points there at the end of the first half to come out defensively and make a key stop. Weatherford with a line drive punt. Kyle Williams somehow made that catch. A diving catch on a punt return. Even with the elements, no turnovers in this game. Williams able to hang their lines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Farmers Insurance. See how your local farmers agent can save you money. We are insurance. We are farmers. By the Ford F-150. The only truck available with EcoBoost. And by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Jim Harbaugh, who took over a 6-10 and 10 team from a year ago, had virtually no offseason to try to change the attitude around the 49ers. He's done that and more. Smith is in trouble and down he goes. Jason Pierre Paul and Justin Tuck. And Jim Harbaugh watches his quarterback get sacked in a loss of seven. Looked like Alex Smith was trying to go down the field to Michael Crabtree and Chase Blackburn. He's going to be able to get underneath that throw and as a result of that, you know, with the pressure and then Justin Tuck forcing him out. And Alex Smith takes a, a big loss then on first down. That's the first giant sack of this game. Second down and 17. <laughs> this is Gore. Blackburn makes the tackle. Third and long coming up. As Gore gets just three, and here's the day for Alex Smith. He's dropped back nine times, been now sacked once, hit three times. And they have tried running the ball with Frank Gore. We heard the report saying that, well, you know, they want to give the ball more to Gore. I think based on what happened in the first half and only two completions and the one big play given up by the Giants defensively, I just think that if the 49ers are going to win this game, I think they're going to have to get a lot more out of their passing game from Alex Smith. As they did a week ago in that shootout against the Saints. Staley moved too early. And third and 14 just became third and 19. Ball start offense. Number 74. Five yard penalty. It's third down. So now third and forever against this defense, which has been getting better and better week by week. And it wasn't that long ago, Troy, that they were talking about Perry Fuel, the defensive coordinator. Would lose his job. Heck, Tom Coughlin would lose his job after that loss to the Redskins. 23 to 10 on December 18th. They were a 7 and 7 club. And now they've won four straight. Smith. Penalty flag flies. Smith stays upright. Nowhere to go except out of bounds, but a flag is down. And Harbaugh is screaming for a late hit. Flag came way before that. And the pocket broke down and Alex Smith started to move. Another long conversation with Ed Hockley and this officiating crew. Here's the call. 
before the quarterback left the pocket, illegal contact, defense number 31. It's a five-yard penalty. It's added on to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, that was the contact that they called Aaron Ross for, and Jason Pierre-Paul was the one who was able to get some pressure. You know, he's given Anthony Davis all he wants over there on that right side of the offensive line. But considering that the Giants had the 49ers backed up, third and long situation, looked like they were going to get off the field, a costly penalty then on Aaron Ross. Yeah, because it carries with it, as you heard, an automatic first down on a third and 19. By penalty, it's a first down. Here's a toss. Hunter reverses field. And the rookie has a first down out across the 45. Kenny Phillips on the tackle and a carry of 14 yards by Kendall Hunter. Yeah, and this was a design play by Kendall Hunter, the cutback. They're going to pull these guys here and try to get some blocking out in front of them then. And you see, once Kendall Hunter, they try to get flow as though they're running some type of reverse. He puts his foot in the ground and comes back to the offensive right side. And this guy has really been somewhat electric his rookie season. He's a young player, obviously, but a very small player with great quickness and speed. Second longest play of the day offensively for the 49ers, 14 yards for Hunter, and now they go to goal. And Frank Bohr takes it into Giants territory again of four. Chase Blackburn checked out prior to that first down carry by Gore. And we'll see if on this tackle he may have injured himself. Number 93, the middle linebacker and starter. Getting checked on the bench for the Giants. Second and six. Smith passes short of Vernon Davis. Kenny Phillips out there defending for the Giants, and that brings up third down and six. You know, on that 73-yard touchdown reception by Vernon Davis, we saw that they were able to catch Antrell Roll in coverage on him. And I know in visiting with Perry Fuel, that's not what they had in mind defensively. They really wanted Kenny Phillips on him, and rarely did they even want Vernon Davis to have single coverage. They wanted to help out with Michael Boley or safety Dion Grant. On that last play, single coverage, but it was Kenny Phillips on him as opposed to Antrell Roll. Rumanero looks like he's lined up in the neutral zone. They don't throw a flag, and Alex Smith has to get out of trouble. Throws across his body, and Jaquan Williams broke it up. Pass intended for Delaney Walker. Well, Alex Smith, he's trying to come inside. Initially, he looks to the outside, and then he comes back inside, and just good coverage by the New York Giants. Jaquan Williams is right there to make a play on the ball. And you know, we've seen Alex Smith now. We talked about the hits that he's taken and then some of the pressures. You know, we've seen him having to get outside the pocket and move around a lot to try to get some throws off. Andy Lee's got the big leg, and now he will try to down it. Inside the 20, they're going to throw a flag. Justin Tuck hit Andy Lee as this ball is stopped at the six. Ed Hockley is checking with the sideline. It's only the five-yard penalty. It's not roughing. It's running into. Running into the kicker by the defense. That penalty, it's only a five-yard penalty. Therefore, the penalty has been declined. First down. It was fourth and six. Andy Lee got off a good punt. Ball's inside the 10. Giants have it up three. Giants beat Atlanta and Green Bay this postseason 61 to 22. The combined scores. The last playoff game here at Candlestick, a heartbreaker back in January of 03. They start. Inside their own 10, up by three. Cruz makes the catch. Good for six. Culliver on the stop. 
David Dill knew that he was going to have his hands full coming into this game trying to block up Eli Manning's backside there with Alden Smith. The pass rush specialist along with Justin Smith. But he's done a nice job in this game and right now Vic Fangio the defensive coordinator he's trying to figure out a way that they can slow down Victor Cruz. Second down and four. There he is again. First down Giants. It was down the stretch when Victor Cruz told us he knew things were different when Andy Reid and the Eagles had Namdi Asamoa across from him in the second meeting with the Philadelphia Eagles. He knew that now the rest of the league is watching out for him. And Victor Cruz is just doing in this game what he's done so often this season for the Giants. I mean, even he said in the middle of the year that he was surprised himself how well he had been playing. Here's Jacobs. Out across the 25, picked up just two. I think it's just a good example, though, you know, as far as what the Giants have at the wide receiver position. And we talked about it earlier in the game, and Vic Fangio, again, the defensive coordinator for the 49ers, talked about it as well. Akeem Nix gets banged up. He's been excellent the last two weeks, and then somebody else emerges. And Victor Cruz has been that guy for much of the year. And he's been that guy again here this evening. Manningham does not have a catch in this game. The other one of the three. Manning slips out of trouble and finds Brandon Jacobs. He turns it into a positive play of three yards. Terrell Brown on the stop for the 49ers third down coming up. You know, it doesn't look like much, but you know, Eli Manning again just understands exactly where his outlet guys are and so with pressure in his face rather than pick up no yards or throw it away he's able to at least get something positive and the Giants throughout this game have been awfully good more importantly Eli Manning has been good on this down third down and five blitz coming off the edge Manning throws it away over the head of Knicks, and it's fourth down for New York. Well, this time the 49ers fooled Eli Manning. They bring the corner blitz, and he doesn't see it right away. Terrell Brown comes off the corner, and then Eli picks it up late. And because he didn't see it right away, he's late on the throw, and then wisely throws it away. Weatherford will punt it. Seven minutes left in this third quarter with Kyle Williams waiting deep. Remember, Ted Ginn not available out with a bad knee. Ginn Jr., one of the best return men in the NFL. Line drive punch, Kyle Williams from outside the 20. Room to run. And a nice return out near the 45. Lost his footing, had more ground to gain. But he went down on his own. Niners have it down three. Who's going to Super Bowl 46 representing the NFC? 648 left third quarter. Best starting field position of the game for the 49ers as Gore goes down in the arms of Jason Pierre-Paul. Get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL to get NFL action right on your phone. Second and eight as Gore got two. You know, they've gotten some yardage out of Gore in this game. His longest run, though, is, is nine yards. I mean, this defense for the Giants has, has really been outstanding in this game outside of the one big play given up early to Vernon Davis last week against the Saints Alex Smith was brilliant and shut down today here is a pass underneath the goal inside the 30 24 yards before he's brought down by Kiwanuka well, they just turned Gore loose. You're going to see the backers here running out. Michael Boley, he takes off. Chase Blackburn, he runs out. And because of that, it opens up that flat then for Frank Gore. And, you know, didn't have to go down the field with it, but a big play for the 49ers. Yeah, only their second of the day for over 20 yards. 
The other one, the 73 yard touchdown to Vernon Davis. Smith with protection. Vernon Davis has another. Touchdown 49ers. Vernon Davis, he motions across, and he gets one-on-one -on -one coverage with Kenny Phillips. And it's it's basically the same type of route that he ran when he had the 73-yard touchdown. He starts as though he may go to the out route. He runs up the, the sideline, and Alex Smith delivers a perfect ball. He had two last week against the Saints. Including the game winner, which they're calling the catch part three. And now he's got two today. And San Francisco leads by four. What a combo. Smith, Davis, touchdown San Francisco. Back to work, go the Giants. In addition, 24-yard punt return by Kyle Williams with a short field a 24 yard catch by Frank Gore 28 yard touchdown for Vernon Davis and another touchback off the foot of David Edgar Reaction on the San Francisco sideline. Now the Giants sideline. New York has it down four. Two touchdown catches. Now Eli Manning, who was 19 of 32. 201 yards and a touchdown. Takes over at the 20. Good pocket downfield. Guess who? One of these big three receivers. Now it's Nix, who left earlier in the first half with a bad shoulder. Back to the touchdown. Yeah, you're going to see Kyle Williams goes through the middle, and it looked like Kenny Phillips thought he was going to get some help because of the trail technique that he was in. It was zone coverage. Corey Webster was the one who got pulled to the middle when Kyle Williams took that path on his route. But you know, just really a breakdown, good execution there by the 49ers, which created some confusion. You know, one of the few times we've seen miscommunication that plagued this defense over the last few games. Good for the Giants to see Nick's healthy and making catches again. And now this one in the direction of where incomplete Nick's who has 280 yards, 165 yards at Green Bay coming into this game, left with a shoulder injury. And I was waiting to see if he would make another catch, if that shoulder was going to bother him enough to just be a decoy or be a real weapon for Eli Manning. And there's his day so far. There's no doubt that with him on the field, I mean, it impacts the defense. Even though Victor Cruz is clearly the guy who Eli's been going to, they've still got to honor Cruz. Or, excuse me, Nick. On second and ten. Here's Bradshaw. A lot of dancing. And eventually, as he is brought down by Goldson, Bowman was in there a gain of three. And so third down coming up for Manning and the Giants. You know, you think about this game and kind of the way it's unfolded, as I was saying, defensively the Giants have really been good in how they have played. Just two big pass plays to Vernon Davis has really been what has allowed the 49ers to be where they're at. And this is the type of game that the 49ers like. It doesn't have to be real pretty, but they hang in there and they hang in there. And then they want to get it to the fourth quarter. Third down and seven. Ray McDonald in there for the sack. They got Cruz in the slot, and that's where Eli was hoping to go with the ball. They run the, the fake out and then take the middle route, and, and because of the pressure inside, maybe they would have had a shot down the middle because the safeties were cleared out. But Ray McDonald, just an excellent job by him, getting pressure right up the middle on Eli. 
That's the third 49ers sack of this game. High snap. Weatherford hits it, and Williams backing up inside the 15. Crosses the 20, and not much more than that. So now with 3.15 left in this third quarter, we have seen a really fun game unfold in front of us, and uh, hard to believe there has not been a turnover despite all the wind, all the rain, and rather frigid night here in San Francisco. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's been a pretty well-played game outside of the two big plays, you know, that the Giants have given up. But as far as keeping it clean and not putting the ball on the ground, they've done a nice job. You know, the Giants offensively have been doing such a good job of converting on third down. and. You feel the momentum shift with the touchdown to Vernon Davis and then defensively now they've made a few stops on third down and have been able to get off the field. Alex Smith takes over at the 22. Hands off to Gore. And Gore inches across the 25 again of three. It's just pretty remarkable to me looking at the 49ers offensively and you know Alex Smith has has just thrown the ball 12 times in this game with just five completions and so what Jim Harbaugh said coming out at half is that he wanted to continue to feed the ball to Frank Gore and with that in mind they will then take their shots and they've been successful on two of them. it knocked as he was trying to get it to Frank Gore. Jason Pierre Paul who was so active had 16 and a half sacks during the regular season fourth best total in the NFL was on the edge and that big body got up and got a piece of it and it's good that he did because if he doesn't then Frank Gore we've seen a couple times now the Giants are trying to get underneath those deeper routes of the 49ers and when they do that it opens up that flat route Gore's already had a couple of completions on it and he would have had a nice nice gain had they been able to get it into his hands on third down Smith steps up now throws for Gore nice catch but not enough for a first down Jaquan Williams out there the rookie was defending for the Giants a gain of five and it's fourth down. And so Gore's been active as a runner and then also as a receiver and a guy who only had 17 receptions for the season but also an individual who up until this year it had five straight years of of 40 plus catches so clearly he has good hands and they've utilized it today. Andy Lee will get to air it out. Got a line drive one. Backing up Blackman. Makes it out to his left. And he gets hit and dropped. Bowman made the play after a 50 yard punt. This Saturday, Fox returns to the Octagon with an incredible UFC fight night triple header. Some of you have a shot at the title headlined by former light heavyweight champion Rashad Evans. Undefeated Phil Davis plus two explosive middleweight bouts. UFC fight night on Fox. Triple header live from Chicago on Saturday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. And the Giants offensively have been shut down the last three times they've had it. Under two to play, third quarter. Jacobs out to the 32 picked up five. Justin Smith was in on the stop. Second and five coming up. And you just don't run on the 49ers, but the Giants keep trying. it on play action and throws it away. 
Closest one to it was Nix. He had Hynoski underneath. But decided to just get rid of it third and five. Yeah, they run the ball, as you said, even though they're not getting a lot of yardage out of their running game, they continue to stick with it. And rightfully so, that's going to be important. The reason they've been unable to sustain drives here in this second half is because they've gotten pressure, the 49ers have, on Eli on these third downs, which they were not doing very well in the first half. Four-man rush. Manning sliding, and it's incomplete. As Goldson banged into the body, I believe, of Terrell Brown. Those two came together, both had thoughts of an interception. Neither one came away with a ball. With Deshaun Goldson, he read this thing, and he was breaking on it, and Eli Manning got confused by Hakeem Nix because he stops and starts up the field. And, I mean, Goldson had a beat on that ball and because Terrell Brown also then trying to make a play they collide and they don't get the interception but otherwise that's an easy turnover for the 49ers it's Terrell Brown who can't get up with exactly one minute left in this third quarter and the 49ers up by four. But a vicious hit as he banged into the body of Deshaun Goldson. This is a secondary that was remade coming into this season. And they have backed up that good front seven very well. Trent Balky, the first year general manager, was awarded by the Riders as the executive of the year, and his head coach, Jim Harbaugh, who told us back in November. After taking over for a 6 and 10 team, we're like a lounge singer or a comedian getting closer and closer to the strip in Vegas. Now they're hoping that Terrell Brown is okay, flat on his back. Inside Giants territory. It's been two big plays to Vernon Davis. For the 49ers, the touchdown for the Giants, first in the NFL career of Bear Pasco, former 49er draft pick. And here's the one that put San Francisco on top. Into the arms of Vernon Davis, and we'll give you a game summary as they continue to look at Terrell Brown. Manning, 216 yards, the touchdown. And it's Cruz just one catch away from a single postseason game Giants record with his 10 catches. A day for Smith and Vernon Davis. And that's Jim Harbaugh, the head coach. Right in the middle of it is the medical and training staff. Look at Terrell Brown. One minute left in this third quarter. And obviously with an injury of this type, they will err on the side of caution before moving Terrell Brown. And see him shake his head as he answers questions. with his helmet off they bring a stretcher out onto the field you can see him moving his legs but obviously wanting to make sure before they move him which they do now getting him into a seated position well, it's always a scary moment when you have an injury and you have the type of hit that Terrell Brown took with the collision there to Desha with Deshaun Goldson and the fact that he is sitting up you know, clearly a real positive sign and they brought out the the stretcher as though they were going to put him on it initially and now it looks like he'll go off on his own will. Thank 
God able to walk off. Meanwhile, it's fourth down back at the other end of the field. The 49ers about to get the ball back with Weatherford out the punt. Six. Fair catch inside the 15. Tonight, catch an all-new American Idol on a special night. Andy, Steve, and Jennifer and Ryan. And their mission to find the next idol takes them aboard the legendary USS Midway. Celebration of talent, fun, and surprises you won't forget. American Idol coming up right after this game on Fox. Steven Tyler was taking in that victory there in Foxborough. Yeah, I saw him on the, the stage as they were presenting the trophy to the New England Patriots who got that win by three points over the Ravens 23-20. So they're in the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 46 on the 5th of February. Here's Gore. Picks up a 49er first down. Well, Delaney Walker, I mean, he's a versatile guy, and he's able to do a lot of things within their running game, and he gets a good block on Jason Pierre-Paul and Joe Staley, the left tackle. He collapses that left side and gives Frank Gore one of the few good lanes that he's had. Coming up on the end of the quarter, Delaney Walker, who broke his jaw in two places on Christmas Eve. Finally back in a big part of the run game. Smith finds a wide open receiver. That's Walker. He was the 49ers leading receiver when these two teams met in November. And with that, we're into the fourth quarter, although there is a flag down on the field. And so we'll get the call as that completion took the ball up to the 30. See Rocky Bernard. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense. Number 99 after the play was over. Picking a player off. A 15-yard penalty will be enforced. From the end of the run. First down. It is against Canty. 15 yard penalty. Off to the fourth. We go back after this from your local Fox. One quarter to go in San Francisco. 14 10. 49ers. On top of the first down at their own 45. Took it inside giant territory. They go back and take a look at the penalty, and initially it looked like it was going to be, you know, on Rocky Bernard the way he finished that play. But then you see at the end of this that somewhere in all of that, he got hit in the mouth and he's bleeding pretty good. And Chris Canty is the one who then came in in retaliation, and they called Canty on the play or for the penalty, similar to the way that Vernon Davis was called in the first half. Second down and four, a little hesitation by Dixon. Had a lot of room out there, but was tripped up. A gain of three. And they had Isaac Sopoaga in there at fullback, 
helping try to lead the way. Here he is right here. You know, we talked about his versatility and his athleticism, and he's not a bad one to get in behind. 49ers 0 for 7 on third down. Handoff. Dixon does not get it. Sopaaga and Justin Smith both out there in the offensive formation, and now it's fourth and one. Well, Kiwanuka takes on Justin Smith and just throws him away. Here's Justin Smith, and he's going to try to come off the ball on Kiwanuka to get a push. Kiwanuka just throws him out of the way and takes on Snyder. But because of the way he handled Smith, then you've got Limbo Joseph who's able to come in and clean it up. That's an excellent job right there by the Giants on third and one. This, this 49ers offense is awfully good in those downs because of those big bodies they get out there. But the Giants are able to hold. And now a delay of game penalty. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. It's fourth down. That will back the ball up inside 49er territory and give Lee a little extra room with which to work. Well, the 49ers use a lot of different linemen when they, that they come in in those short yardage situations. I thought it was interesting in talking with Greg Roman. He said it really came from their days in Stanford in an attempt to try to develop some of their young offensive linemen and get them some playing time. Of course, that time they went with defense with Justin Smith and Sopoaga. End punt. Blackman with a fair catch near his 20. That's where the Giants will have it. 12:37 left. Down by four. Starting at the 20. There are the numbers this postseason during the fourth quarter. Here's Bradshaw. Brought down from behind by Carlos Rogers, and we go down to the field and Chris Myers. Show the 49ers without starting corner Terrell Brown, who was involved in that collision with Deshaun Goldson. He did walk over to the sideline. Goldson was speaking with him on the sideline. The trainer and doctor checked his neck. He was in pain. He has gone to the locker room officially, a head and thigh injury in the locker room for observation. And now in the game is Tremaine Brock. In place of Brown, second and ten. Manning steps up and gets dropped by Alden Smith. And the rookie out of Missouri who led all NFL rookies with 14 sacks has his second of this postseason. He comes off the edge and Kareem McKenzie thought he had done a pretty good job on him but he just keeps it going and Eli thought he was out of the picture as well but because he continues to play he then circles back around and gets the play on Manning. Now third down and 15, and that's four 49er sacks in this game. Incomplete for Bradshaw. It's fourth down. Now the 49ers go with a three-man rush, and because of the down and distance, they're able to play deep in coverage, not give up anything down the field, and the only chance Eli was going to have was to come underneath, and Alden Smith, with the three-man rush, is still one-on-one -on -one with Kareem McKenzie and forced Eli to get it out of his hands. Giants now have failed on seven straight third down tries after converting five of their first seven. Weatherford hits the punt. Williams stays away, and that ball is touched by the Giants inside the 30. Devin Thomas, I believe, thought maybe Kyle Williams touched it. That's why he picked it up and ran toward the end zone, but this ball belongs to San Francisco as the officiating crew is saying Williams stayed away from it. Let's take a look. The ball was not touched by the receiving oh. team. Therefore, it is the receiving team's ball at the spot that it was picked up and first touched by New York. Sure looked to me, first Joe, down. like it touched his knee. I agree. That is reviewable. Look at that shot. 
This could be a big break for the Giants. Look at this ball as it appears to us as it glances off the knee of Kyle Williams. Mike Pereira is with us. Mike, what'd you think of that call in the play? Hey, listen, I think it clearly does touch him. And you know, the the Giants, in my opinion, are going to get the ball here. They don't get the advance because you cannot advance a kick. And even though it was touched, it still remains a kick. But I think it's pretty clear here that it does, in fact, touch the uh, the kick receiver. So the Giants should get the ball. It's going to be a huge play. It's a challenge by Tom Coughlin. And Ed Hockley is still under the hood. It looks to all of us as if the Giants will get the ball down by four. It's just a great job by Devin Thomas. You know whether he saw that it actually came off of his leg. I think that he did. But he kept after the play and then he's able to recover that and. You know Kyle Williams it looked like he knew that it came off of his knee as well and started to go after it and then stopped and really kind of got caught and didn't know exactly what to do and as we blow this thing up I, I think it looks it's easier to see actually in in real time as opposed to slow motion that it did in fact make contact with him. But we're still waiting for Ed Hockley to reappear from under the hood part of that could be where the ball is going to be spotted. We've got the ball right now. Inside the 30 at the 29. And we'll take another look at it in regular speed. So it clearly looks like that ball hit. Kyle Williams and now we'll get the call. And I'm sure the explanation from Ed Hockley. The loose punt hit the 49er player on the knee. Now the Giants are not allowed to advance the ball by rule. It's dead as soon as they pick it up because it's still a punt. But it is the Giants ball at the 29 yard line where they recovered it. The clock should be reset to 11.08. 11.08, that's what it was when he recovered the ball, and no timeouts are charged. First down. We showed you the hustle of Devin Thomas all the way down the field. Former second round pick of the Washington Redskins. That ball got Kyle Williams, who stands with his palms up to the sky, and it was Thomas there for the recovery. Giants ball down by four at the 49ers. 29 yard line. That will go as the first turnover of the game. And it came courtesy of that bounce. So Manning back to the field. And a handoff is to Bradshaw. Uses a stiff arm and is driven out of bounds just outside the 25. You know, you get into a game like this, as we see, Kyle Williams is still incredulous that he got called for having touched the ball. But, you know, a tight game like this, a defensive battle, you know, what tilts the field in one team's favor oftentimes then is special teams. And Kyle Williams really had no business being as close to that ball as he was. Second and seven. Just gets rid of it, ends up on his back, and Justin Smith is the guy who put him there. Now third down. You know, Eli had time to get the ball out. There's just good coverage by this secondary for the 49ers. We've got Cruz and Carlos Rogers is on him, but there's help over the top on the opposite side with Nick. You've got a corner and a safety giving help to him, and then Justin Smith comes in and, and cleans up Eli, but the coverage has been very good here in the second half. This defense of the 49ers has been very good in the second half. Giants have added six times. They have only two first downs since halftime. Pass. Caught. Knicks. First down inside the 15. 
Well, we saw the 49ers bring the corner blitz in the first half, and they got to Eli. This time, they do not. They bring the corner here. The safety has to then come over the top and, co and then cover. But because of the protection that the Giants had, they pick up the blitz. They then have one-on-one -on -one with Akeem Nix on Deshaun Goldson. Obviously, advantage Giants. Realize Manning has rallied the Giants to win in five games this season. And his team was trailing in the fourth quarter. A turnover has the Giants inside the red zone, now down to the six. As Bradshaw carries for six, a flag is down. Holding offense, number 64. Ten yard penalty, repeat first down. They get the center, David Boss. David Boss right in the middle who left there in the first half for a little bit. Gets called for the hold there against Isaac Sopaoga. Sopaaga, excuse me. Now first and 20. With Nix, the intended receiver. Goldson on the coverage. They try to run a high low here on the linebacker, and then if he comes up, takes the shallow crosser, you're trying to get the Akeem, get the ball into Akeem Nix in behind that, but Goldson recognizes it, and he jumps it. These safeties for the 49ers are very active guys, both in run support as well as attacking the ball when it's in the air. No flag. Bang on the contact with the ball arriving to Knicks. Now second and 20. Manning completes to Bradshaw. And his forward progress is stopped just inside the 17. Rodgers was there. Carlos Rodgers, part of that revamped secondary for the 49ers. He's had a big year. He has had a big year. And they do a good job, this entire defense does. And Rodgers does on this play as far as making the tackle. You don't see many missed tackles with this defensive unit. Now third down and 15. Get out base, get out base. Manning, end zone. Manningham for the touchdown. This NFC Championship game, 17-yard touchdown, Manningham. And he's on Tremaine Brock, who had to come in because of the injury to Brown. And Jake Ballard, he's on the inside. He pulls the safety out of the way, which then gives Manning a clear shot to Manningham for the touchdown. This to make it a three-point game. 17-14. They've been riding Eli Manning all season. And down the stretch, he gets his team into the end zone, up three. Ends go with Visa. Kai Williams is one of the two guys waiting deep for this kickoff from Lawrence Times. Mario Manningham, his first catch. Following that muff punt, 29-yard drive. Giants back out in front by three. They led by three at the half. Here's Kyle Williams. Kyle Williams. Big return out to the 45. Knocked down by Deion Grant. Here's the turnover. Kyle Williams had set up the go-ahead touchdown. Now a 40-yard return by number 10. 49ers have it down by three. Starting at their 45, down by three. Alex Smith and the 49ers.
down the sideline. Pass incomplete, but a flag is thrown. Delaney Walker, the intended receiver, and he believes the flag is against the Giants. Before the pass was thrown, illegal hands to the face, defense number 21. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot, and an automatic first down. Well, they had Kenny Phillips matched up on Vernon Davis. They went man across the board, and Kenny Phillips was up tight at the snap of the ball on Vernon Davis right here. Had he been able to get a clean release, you can see when Kenny Phillips is in coverage and he feels that Davis is, is on the go route, I mean, he's doing everything he can just not to give up the big play again. 12 49er first downs in this game, four by penalty. Including this one, which takes it to midfield. Smith flushed out, takes off. Alex Smith down inside the 35. Seventeen yard run by the 49er quarterback. Yeah, Alex Smith is trying to work to his left. Lindell Joseph is the one who gets pressure. And then once Alex Smith flushes, he's able to again, you know, make something happen with his feet. We talked about it early in this game that this guy, people don't talk a lot about his ability to run, but he's fast and he knows how to run it when he has to. He's carried it six times for 42 yards in this game. He had the 28-yard touchdown run last week. Tosses to Hunter. Kendall Hunter breaks two tackles and takes it down to the 15. 18-yard run by the rookie out of Oklahoma State. Another well-designed play by Greg Roman. They're going to bring three guys. And so you see what Hunter has out in front of him. Delaney Walker, he does a good job as well, getting Kenny Phillips on the ground, and that's a, that's a nice job of execution by this 49ers team running the football. There have been no points scored at this end of the field in this game. The 49ers were number 30 in the league in the red zone at scoring touchdowns during the regular season. That's Gore. And he takes it to the 10. And drill roll on the stop, a gain of five. You like what you see from the 49ers after the Giants are able to get the touchdown to Manningham. They get a good return, excellent field position, and then the offense goes to work. Giants with a 21st ranked red zone defense during the regular season at second and five. Smith held the ball low, part of the fake, and the pass incomplete. Closest one to it. It's a pretty interesting deal that, <laughs> that Alex Smith ran on this. You know, we're out at practice on Friday, and you know, I saw them run this play, but I thought that Alex Smith was just kind of goofing around, to be honest with you. And I don't know if he was trying to make it look like they fumble the ball and then see if they can't get a cheap one. You know, down the field, but the Giants are not surprised. You saw pressure by Tuck. Kyle Williams, the closest one to it. It's third and five, and they're looking for their first third down conversion of the day. Pass is caught. Crabtree made the catch, but short of the first down. And look at Jim Harbaugh. He wanted a timeout. And didn't get it. Now, whatever it was that Jim Harbaugh saw that the Giants were were doing in their coverages, he was hoping to get the timeout. But as you said, he's unable to get it before the ball was snapped. It's a good job defensively, giving up some plays, but then tightening up down here in the red zone and forcing a field goal. It's fourth and two at the seven, and Akers will try and tie it. He's had a record-setting year. Time Eagle for 25 out. And we're tied at 17. Jim Harbaugh thought he had the timeout. It was not called. Field goal ties it with 539 left.
looking ahead to the Pro Bowl, which is coming up, beginning of Super Bowl week. It kicks off with that Pro Bowl on Sunday, January 29th on NBC. Five thirty-nine left. Tied at 17, and Eli Manning will go back to the huddle, back to the field, and try and take his Giants down the field yet again. Took advantage of a turnover the last time they had it. Threw a touchdown to Manningham, and now with 5.39 left, Akers. Busting it out of the back of the end zone. Well, this is a good one tonight. It was a good one back in the 1990 NFC Championship game. January 20th of 91, Montana knocked out by Marshall in the fourth quarter. And then it was Barr with a field goal. He would hit five that day. It's a Roger Craig fumble that let the Giants drive down, get into position. A game-winning field goal with four seconds left. Giants went on to win Super Bowl 25. Screen. That's Beckham. And Beckham with a gain of two. And the 49ers, they're going to dial up the blitz on that last play. Carlos Rogers comes off the edge, and, and as I said earlier, they just they just keep playing where he's able to then make a play from behind. Right now, a lot of urgency when you look at the clock, and at five-plus minutes left, you're just not sure how many more possessions you're going to get. And so the Giants hoping to be able to do something with it on this one. Low snap, second and eight, downfield and overthrown is Manningham. He had position, incomplete third and eight coming up. Pretty good route by Mario Manningham. He's able to, able to get the release. Once he goes inside, he's expecting that ball then to the outside, and you saw him start to veer out. Eli made a nice throw on it as well. They're just unable to connect. But when you take that inside release, sometimes it makes for a tough angle then for a quarterback. Another low snap. Manning completes but short of the first down to Beckham. And that is a big three and out. Put together by this 49er defense. Well, Beckham, he's going to give a chip, and then he's just going to leak out over the ball. Patrick Willis, he's playing deep right here in the middle, but with his eyes on Eli and everything out in front of him. And as soon as then Beckham catches the ball, he drives on it in another sure tackle. This one driven toward the sideline off the foot of Weatherford. We'll see where they mark it. At the 35. With 4.07 left. And now we welcome you inside our broadcast booth. I'm Joe, that's Troy, and uh, we had a chance to talk to Alex Smith who I'm sure goes out there right now onto this field with a lot of confidence the way he and this offense played last week in the fourth quarter. Well, no doubt. I think really because of the way that he's played all season long, but especially because of what happened there in that fourth quarter. You know, obviously a lot of big plays there at the end, but to be able to make the plays that he made and the throw that he made to Vernon Davis, there's no question that he is a confident quarterback at this time, knowing that he's going to deliver when he has to, even though he's just 9 of 18 in this game. On first down. He throws it away. Think about Alex Smith. 
19 and 31 was his career record into this season. He had shoulder surgery, was injured in 07 and 08. He met with his new head coach, Jim Harbaugh, in mid January. His deal was up, and Harbaugh said, I wanted to find out if this guy wanted to play or if he wanted to be a backup with his hat on backward on the sideline. Alex Smith wanted to stay here. He wanted to prove himself to the 49ers. In a tie game in the NFC Championship, he hands the ball off to Gore. He runs into Tuck and others to bring up third down and long for Alex Smith in the 49ers offense. Yeah, third down and long, and they have yet to convert a third down in this game. Well, 0 for 9 on third down. See the difference in what happens on the outside for each quarterback. Only one catch by a wide receiver for San Francisco. It's third and seven. Four-man rush. And Smith is wrapped up back near the 25. Kiwan Nuka was the man who made that play for the Giants and a big hold defensively for New York on third down. Excellent coverage by the New York Giants. Initially, they thought that they could get Vernon Davis down the middle, but Deion Grant was looking him up. You've got Antrell Roll playing on the outside. Deion Grant takes the throw away from Alex Smith, and then by that time, the pocket had collapsed on him. Giants take a timeout. They have two left. 312 left in regulation. How well has that Giants defense played over the last four plus games now? We look at a recap of the second half. It was Vernon Davis with his second touchdown catch of the game, which put San Francisco on top. And then a month punt off the knee of Kyle Williams. The Giants took advantage. Manning, Manning Ham, and the go ahead points. David Akers field goal tied it. And now with Aaron Ross waiting deep. Booming punt by Lee. Ross out across the 25. With 3.04 remaining, two timeouts for number 10. We've seen this a number of times. We showed what Eli has done in the fourth quarter this season, what he's done in the postseason. And when given this situation so many times, Eli Manning has delivered for this Giants team. NFL record 15 touchdown passes during the fourth quarter during the regular season. Total yards get even. Manning, the number two rated quarterback during the regular season in the fourth quarter. And he likes finding number 80, Victor Cruz. Manning, down he goes. Wrapped up by Willis. And now the clock will wind in the San Francisco 49ers, depending on what happens here. We'll start thinking about timeouts. Well, the 49ers, they went two deep safeties, and they're going to give help over the top. So you see the middle of the field, and Cruz then is, the, is where the ball has to go. But the protection didn't hold up long enough. Five San Francisco sacks. That was good for a loss of 11. Manning stays in the pocket, hits Bradshaw. Is out across the 20. That's it. The ball comes out, but they are going to rule forward. Progress was stopped. That ball came out, a gain of six, but they're saying the Giants maintain possession. Field. The runner was stopped by his forward progress. Third down. Well, this time Bowman, he comes in and, and he tries ripping it out, and he's able to do that, and that's what this Niners defense does. Once they stand you up, they are going after the football, and for the Giants, they're fortunate that they called it.
called it down because forward progress had stopped. We are at the two-minute warning. Third down and long coming up for the Giants against this 49er defense. Francisco. The officials on the field ruled forward progress had been stopped. Mike Pereira, our rules expert, is that the right call? It is the right call. Bradshaw is going backwards when Bowman pries it out. It is not reviewable. Once forward progress is ruled, you cannot challenge. Third down and 15 from the 21. Extra men on the rush, down the middle, Cruz, incomplete. And it's fourth down. Well, they had a chance. Again, they give the help with the safeties to the outside receivers, and Cruz then is essentially one-on-one -on -one down the middle with Carlos Rogers. It was a ball that got away from Eli just enough behind him on his back shoulder that had he have been able to lead him up the field to his front shoulder, Cruz would have had an opportunity to make a play. Cruz gets up gimpy as Weatherford will punt it. Kyle Williams waits for it. The Niners should have good field position. They have three timeouts left. A fair catch called for inside the 30. Good punt by Weatherford. That's an excellent punt by Weatherford because of where he was on the field having to punt. If you expected the 49ers to probably come away with much better field position than they ended up having. It's a 51-yard punt. With a minute 47 seconds left. Who would have thought a season after a 6-10 and 10 finish, a team that hadn't been to the postseason in nine years, Alex Smith, who had his toughness questioned, his ability questioned, would come on to the field with three timeouts remaining at the 29 trying to get his team in a position to go to the Super Bowl. Four-man rush. Smith gets away and then throws it into the grass, short of Crabtree, second and ten. And you talk about Alex Smith, and earlier this week, he talked about what it's like there to go to the 49er facility day after day, passing the five Lombardi trophies. They're on his way to the quarterback meeting each and every morning, and it's a reminder of the rich tradition and history of this organization. And here he stands, a minute and 39 seconds from taking his team to the Super Bowl and a chance to collect one of those for himself. How about the rich tradition and history of that position alone? Second and ten. of Crabtree it's third and ten both of these defenses though Joe throughout this game have been awfully good when they've had to be what a turnaround it's been for this Giants defense this drive has taken only 14 seconds off the clock big third and ten here Four-man rush. Smith fires incomplete. And it's a quick three and out. The two tight ends, Davis and Walker, the closest ones to it. And now with a minute 29 left, the Giants will get it back. Yeah, and I think the story of this game, at least for the Giants defensively, has been how good they have been on third down. They've been able, when they forced them to third downs, the, they've been able to get off the field. And the 49ers 0 for 11 on that down. Aaron Ross waits deep. He went up and got there too late. Good one. Ross from inside the 15. Nowhere to go. It will be a long field to navigate for Eli Manning. 
With a minute 18 left and two timeouts. We showed you six game-winning drives this season for Eli Manning during the regular year. Secondary for the 49ers receiver Cruz slipped. Second and ten. And Justin Smith. There was some confusion on the back end with the secondary and Carlos Rogers. He's on one side of the field and then he has to come all the way back across to cover the slot receiver. But Justin Smith, he's able to push David Deal right into the face of Eli Manning. Second down and 10. Manning looking for somewhere to go. Bradshaw steps out of bounds as Eli Manning found him. And Ahmad Bradshaw good for 30 yards and out of bounds with a minute five left. It was really great coverage everywhere except on Ahmad Bradshaw, but it was because of Eli keeping the play alive. And I've said it a lot of times when Eli has time and he can buy time. He can get through every receiver on the field and Ahmad Bradshaw was the last guy he was expecting to be able to get the ball to on that play but because he kept the play alive and bought some time he finds him up the left sideline. That's Bradshaw's longest catch of the season now he gets it on the ground and he's wrestled down at midfield with a minute left. A gain of two Ray McDonald who's had a big game for the 49ers. On the stop and there's Lawrence Tynes who is already in his career with the Giants with his right foot sent New York to the Super Bowl. Two timeouts left. Manning finds Bradshaw room to run. Ahmad Bradshaw had that room closed down and a nice play is made by Tremaine Brock. And with 32 seconds left timeout taken by the Giants. This is amazing by Eli Manning in the pocket. You know he is under duress and to beat you cannot take a sack in that situation and not only does he not take a sack with Alden Smith draped over him he's able to find Ahmad Bradshaw underneath uncanny his ability in the pocket to get the ball out. He's got his shoulder pad hanging out grass in his face mask his helmet on cockeyed and he still knows to call the timeout one left. A big third down coming up for the ball at the San Francisco 46. Times career long 53 yards, which means getting it to the 35 yard line. Third down and four. This one over the middle. Victor Cruz can't make the catch. And now it's fourth down. Almost a circus catch by Victor Cruz. You see that he's trying to make a play on the ball as it's bouncing around. Eli Manning had Mario Manningham side breaking route that likely would have gotten him the first down but instead he elects to go down the middle to Cruz and just unable to haul that one in. Now Weatherford will try to pin the 49ers deep. 27 seconds left San Francisco remember all three of their timeouts remaining. Delay of game. Before the ball was snapped delay of game offense five yard penalty. It's fourth down. By the way, Victor Cruz, 10 catches in this game, none over the last eight drives. You know, with a little over five minutes to play in this game, Joe, I was talking about the urgency that then falls upon an offense because you're not sure how many more possessions you're going to get. But each of these teams have had two, and now the 49ers since that time are getting their third possession. Hunt is 
is caught and now out of bounds carrying it there Kyle Williams and after just a 29 yard punt the player down for the Giants that sash a 14 yard return by Kyle Williams 19 seconds left we saw that movement up front defensively for the 49ers and Weatherford was in a position I think just to make sure after that low snap he just got the ball out of his vicinity off his foot in the direction of Kyle Williams no block that's right he's just he's just got to get it out of there as best he can and both of these punters Weatherford and Lee have been tremendous it's a net gain of just 15 yards because of the short punt and the good return the ball is at the 36 19 seconds left Sash able to get up and jog to the sideline Marcus Dobbs a rookie got him on that punt return just so you know David Akers his career long Troy is 57 yards which means getting it to the 39 yard line he was hitting from about 60 during the pregame with 19 seconds that's all remain in regulation but with the 49ers having their timeouts that certainly makes things interesting as far as how the Giants approach this defensively. Smith comes underneath, finds Gore. A timeout taken immediately by Harbaugh. Now just 12 seconds on the clock. Well, they'll get a couple plays off because of the timeouts, but. Well, clearly they've got to be able to get the ball down the field and so if you're Alex Smith throwing it underneath for not much yardage is not really going to help you too much. Second down and seven the ball at the thirty nine. If this goes to overtime there have only been three NFC championship games that have played on past regulation. Four man rush. Time winding down and now down is Alex Smith. Tuck is there for the Giants. And a timeout. Timeout San Francisco. Surprisingly that taken by San Francisco. Yeah, Harbaugh, he was quick to get out on the field and, and make sure the official saw him to get the timeout, wanting to take one more shot at this. And we saw what can happen last week. Hoping for a completion, hoping for a penalty, a defensive penalty, hoping for one chance to win it in regulation. Otherwise, we will we'll go to overtime and you remember the change in the overtime rules for this 2011 season into the postseason in 2012 and I think you got to be real careful here the 49ers do you know, as I said Harbaugh calls the timeout wants one more shot at this thing if he's going to try a Hail Mary it's going to be tough to be able to drive the ball into the end zone or hold it long enough to let your guys get deep and anything can happen with this pass rush by the Giants. third down and Alex Smith avoids the sack throws underneath for Walker and we are going to overtime Kendall Hunter ends up with the football but time has run out in this fourth quarter and we will stay right here that's the end of the fourth quarter Stay here for the coin flip. Mike Pereira joins us up here in our broadcast booth, and we talked about it. We've seen an overtime game out in Denver, but the rule changes. Why don't you go through them for us 
as we uh, had some changes leading into this season here for the playoffs. Well, remember that now in uh, postseason, we're basically going to start another game. And the big change was that the that each team is going to get an opportunity to possess the ball unless the team that first possesses it scores a touchdown or if the defense happens to force a safety that would end the game also. But the key is is that that the field goal in the first possession won't end the game. With the score tied and at the end of regulation we'll go into overtime. There are special overtime rules in the playoffs. Both teams get an opportunity to possess the football with one exception. That one exception is that a touchdown always wins the game. So if the team that gets the opening kickoff scores a touchdown on their first possession, the game is over at that point. If the team that first gets the ball kicks a field goal, the other team will have an opportunity to possess the football, and then we are essentially in sudden death. If the first team that gets the football does not score, we will go into sudden death. The second team will then have the opportunity to possess the ball, and the first team to score, even if it's just by three points, will win. Timing rules are the f as if we're starting a new game. Uh, we will use regular timing rules. And replay, all replay will be conducted from the booth. The coaches do not have challenges. New York, it's your uh, call. What's your call? Tails. Tails. Tails is the call. Tails is the call. It is tails. New York has won the toss and wishes to receive. San Francisco is going to kick this direction. Good luck, that gentlemen. Was Zach Diasi who called tails. It was tails. Giants will get the ball. Raining harder now than it has all game. Let's go to overtime. We play on at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, tied at 17. Winner goes to Super Bowl 46. Giants will start with the football. Jerning and the rookie waits deep. Akers tied for fourth during the regular season with 47 touchbacks. Take a look at the Mannings during the postseason. Eli in his career, six and three. 16 touchdowns, eight interceptions. The Super Bowl win, Super Bowl 42. Peyton with his win in the Colts over the Bears, nine and ten in his postseason career. And Eli Manning has four wins on the road, which is tied for the most all time. He gets number five here today. The Giants are in the Super Bowl. Hynoski, the fullback. Nice job to survive the initial hit. It was Culliver who couldn't bring him down. And it's a gain of 10. You know, I think the best thing you can say about a player, Joe, is in big games that that guy plays big. And that certainly is true when you talk about Eli Manning, especially this year. Of course, the great run in 07 in the postseason, but as good as he's been this season, during the regular season, he's been even better here in the postseason. No doubt about it. And even with these conditions, he's thrown it 53 times. Number 54, down the middle, and this one is broken up and nearly picked. Rodgers stepped in front of Victor Cruz. You know, he had a chance down the field, but in, in these conditions, that's a hard throw to make. You know, Eli's able to drive enough on it, but, you know, with the wind and then, of course, with the moisture, you can see that, you know, Cruz is having to hold up just a little bit, and, and Rodgers has a chance to try to make a play on that ball. And, of course, he dropped a lot of those while he was in Washington, but he's made most of those catches this year. Six interceptions during the regular season for Rodgers. Gordon was there. Also for San Francisco, here's a handoff to Bradshaw. And on second and ten, Bradshaw gets four. It's a big four yards, though, when you consider the fact that now on third down, you're looking at third and six. And that's what you're hoping to do when you run it there on second and long. Sin 
complete. And that's the rookie Jernigan. And now the Giants two for their last 13 tries on third down. Well, Gerald Jernigan, he was in the slot. Carlos Rogers was on him, and, and even if Jernigan is able to make that catch, he does not pick up the first down. Rogers, with good coverage, would have been in there to then make that tackle. And another good defensive stop for the 49ers. Jernigan did not have a catch during the regular season. And here in overtime of the NFC Championship game, Manning looks his way on third down. Williams from inside the 20. Good coverage downfield. Greg Jones, the first guy there. 48-yard punt by Weatherford. Let's look back. 73 yards to Vernon Davis started the scoring. Bear Pasco tied it on a touchdown throw from Eli Manning. Vernon Davis his second. And then after a month punt, Manning found Manning Ham, his first catch, a touchdown. Field goal by Akers tied it, and now we're in overtime. Starting at the 22. So any points by the 49ers ends this game as this one skips in to Kyle Williams. When you think about these two punters and the job that they've done though in this in this game, Joe, even on that last punt by Weatherford, I mean. You miss one of these punts in this situation, and it's pretty much game over for an offense to be able to come away, you know, with a field goal. And throughout this game, both of these punters have been excellent. Rutherford has averaged over 47 yards per punt. Lee over 45 yards per punt. And off is to Gore. And Gore is brought down by Jason Pierre-Paul. A loss of two. And Jason Pierre-Paul, he just is able to come on the back side. He's not blocked, and they're they're hopeful that they're able to get Gore on the play side and that the backside guy left unblocked won't be a factor. But because the Giants were so good up front, Pierre-Paul was then able to make the play. See where they spot it. It looks to be just short. Vernon Davis on the catch. And it is fourth down. 11 yards on third and 12. Well, Kenny Phillips was a safety deep, and then he saw where Smith was going with the ball, and so he was able to drive on it. Antrell Roll was in man coverage, but he was then able to drive on it and keep Davis picking up the first down. Good job again by this Giants defense. Line drive punt, Ross. On the return. Decent starting field position for the Giants at their own 36. 14-yard return. Dixon on the tackle. Completions and attempts. The Giants' single postseason game record for Eli Manning. Over 300 yards. Back to work. the 42 a gain of six. Boy, it sure looked like they were going to be able to get a lot more out of that with Ahmad Bradshaw and Justin Smith. He makes a good play. He's right here in the middle, but he comes off of it, and he's able to make a play. Otherwise, it's Ahmad Bradshaw one-on-one -on, -one on the safety, Whitner. 
second and four. Quick set up and throw, and it's Travis Beckham. The tight end with a Giants first down. It was a nice job by Beckham getting inside, and then as he turns, you see him kind of turn his body there and, and give Manning a big body and a big target to put the ball on him. And so he's able to shield Carlos Rogers away from him and pick up that first down. Fourth catch of this game for Beckham. Had five the entire regular season. Hynoski. That's Willis. And Patrick Willis, the all pro inside linebacker, brings down Hynoski again of just one. Again for times. Career long, 53 yards, which means getting it to the 35 yard line and the hit by Willis knocked the mouthpiece out of the mouth. They've been knocking mouthpieces out all season. And a timeout taken defensively by San Francisco. Second down for the Giants. We come back. We're in overtime now and after our coverage is over we invite you to stick around. For all new American Idol coming up after football here on Fox. Second down and nine. Across from him initiated the movement, and it looks like it's going to be against San Francisco. Zone infraction, defense number 55. He came into the neutral zone and caused the offensive player to move. Five yard penalty, it's still second down. Jamad Brooks right here. And he gets into the neutral zone, and he's the one who forces. McKenzie there to move. Lawrence Stein said he felt comfortable kicking in this direction. The edge of his range, 53 yards. Which means again getting it to the 35-yard line. Second down and three. This pass is short and Manning got hit. Manningham, the intended receiver. Well, Mod Brooks didn't much like that previous call even though it was the right call and so he then uses the speed rush on Kareem McKenzie and comes right underneath Eli Manning just as he's trying to deliver it. Now third down and three. snap Manning down he goes and another San Francisco sack Justin Smith six sacks of Eli Manning on the day for the 49ers and you see what Eli Manning had but it didn't much matter because Justin Smith goes right through Dave Deal just pushes him back a little bit like what we saw last week in that New Orleans game him driving the, deep, the the offensive tackle into the quarterback. He does the same thing with Deal there on third down. Weatherford hits it. Kyle Williams wants the ball. It's recovered by the Giants. Jaquan Williams, the rookie, knocked it out. Recovered by Devin Thomas. And the second year receiver, punt returner Kyle Williams with no Ted Ginn Jr. Available because of a knee injury. He's muffed a punt, and now this one is knocked out by Jaquan Williams 
recovered by the Giants already inside field goal range. Yeah, Jaquan Williams, I mean, he comes in there, he's able to then make a play on the ball, and you see Devin Thomas, the hustle that he has getting down the field, and the same kind of hustle that we saw earlier on the muff by Kyle Williams. So two big plays then in the kicking game for the New York Giants getting great field position, as you said, Joe, already right here in field goal position. This is a San Francisco team that's been good on defense, good on special teams, has lived by taking it away. They turn it over again. Giants in great. Kyle Williams in a lonely spot. Fumbling on that punt return. The ball inside the 49er 25. It's Bradshaw. And Bradshaw with a nice run on first down inside the 20. And we go back to the play by Jaquan Williams. And really just a nice job by Jaquan Williams coming in and you know, trying to make a play. And as he does, he's able to get his hand then on the ball. And the job that Devin Thomas does with the hustle, getting down there to recover it. to see what Tom Coughlin wants to do here. If he's going to just try to score a touchdown and not put it in the hands of Tynes or set it up for the field goal. Here's Bradshaw again. He's got a first down. And Bradshaw to the 10. Be a 28-yard field goal from here for Lawrence Tynes, who sent the Giants to Super Bowl 42. With a 47-yarder in overtime at Lambeau Field back in January of 08. Well, it looks like right now they're going to try to center this thing into the middle of the field. Brad Shaw again cuts back. And he's down to the six. Same end of the field where Matt Barr sent the Giants to Super Bowl 25 in their win over Buffalo back in January of 91. Well, they're not going to center it. They're going to they're run it here, I guess, and just see what they can get out of this and either score with a touchdown or make it as easy as they can for Lawrence Times on the field goal. It's second down. Now they center it. And it will be Lawrence Tynes onto the field. Here in overtime to again send the Giants to the Super Bowl. Diossi will snap it. Weatherford will hold it. Tynes will try and end it and set up that rematch with New England. Timeout from the sideline. 26 yard try. A penalty flag before the snap. A delay of game. Delay of game offense. Five yard penalty. It's third down. And Coughlin can't believe it. Eli Manning came in and was trying to tell his head coach that the play clock was expiring. And Tom Coughlin, yeah, he's got the headset on, so he doesn't hear Eli Manning right away. And by the time he realizes what Eli is saying to him, it was too late. Pundit missed earlier for Baltimore from 32. At New England, this from 31. And now timeout is taken by San Francisco. Lawrence Tynes has been in this position before on the road. Last time at frozen over Lambeau Field. The 47 yarder to win it after missing at the end of regulation and missing twice in the fourth quarter. And now from 31 yards out, he'll try to send the Giants to Super Bowl 46.
Giants are going back to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 46 will be the Patriots and the Giants after this low snap. Good job by Weatherford, who has had a nice day all around. Well, he sure has, and of course, the way he punted the ball throughout this game, but to be able to secure a poor snap and get it placed then perfectly for Lawrence Times to kick the game winner. Officially a 31-yarder to win it for the Giants. Will represent the NFC and take on New England. And what an unbelievable first season it was as head coach of the 49ers for Jim Harbaugh and this San Francisco team. But the Giants are moving on to Indianapolis, and we go down to Pam Oliver. It went off your foot, and you took off running in this direction. Oh, no, no, you no. knew instantly. Just tell me what that feeling's like. Oh, my gosh, twice. It's, it's amazing. I mean, this team, the way come on the road in San Francisco against a good team, I mean, you know, we're 10 minutes almost into overtime. So, you know, someone had to win the game. Give my hats off to San Francisco to our great team. What is it like when that person is you? It's on you. It's your foot. Um, you know, it's my second NFC Championship game, my second game winner. Um, it's amazing. You know, I had dreams about this last night. It was from 42, not 31. <laughs> but uh, I was so nervous today before the game, just anticipating this kind of game. You know, I mean, I'm usually pretty cool, but there was something about tonight that I knew I was going to have to make a kick. So. Hats off to Eli, offense, defense, you know, great win. You did a great job. Congratulations. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Back to you, Joe. All right, thanks, Pam. The Giants organization now 5-0 and oh in oh, NFC oh, Championship oh. games in their franchise history. American Idol is coming up, but we will continue to wrap up this overtime win for the Giants. A lot more coming up from San Francisco after this. Giants are moving on to Super Bowl 46.